Well, every year we see thousands of companies go out of business. With the end of JobKeeper, there is a lot of talk that a wave of insolvencies and business closures is looming. Peter Dean's creator and founder of 52 Risks is here to talk about the business outlook for the balance of 2021 and what companies can do to stay in good financial health. Welcome to Ticker Peter. Thanks so much for joining me today. Good afternoon. Good to be back again. Now, looking back on the last 12 months, did we actually see a lot of businesses permanently close during 2020 as a result of the pandemic? Well, surprisingly, despite what was a terrible year for you know, virtually all businesses, there was, um, there was surprisingly a low level of uh, business insolvencies. Uh, whilst there isn't normally a usual level of business insolvencies, it, it runs between eight and 10,000 businesses per year. Um, last year, however, because of um, uh, some of the legislative changes that the government put in place um, to effectively have a moratorium on business, businesses um, uh, being taken to court for not paying their bills, uh, because of the government and um, bank support that was in place through programs such as JobKeeper, um, there was actually a, a lot of businesses that continued on through to the end of uh, 2020. Um, I think if you look at some of the cities, obviously Melbourne was more, much more heavily impacted. Um, there was uh, a number of permanent business closures, uh, businesses that chose not to reopen at the end of the very, very lengthy lockdowns that were in place. Um, and I think you also saw it in some of the regional areas and tourism affected areas um, as a result of uh, fundamentally the, the demand for their products and services not being in place. Absolutely. We are seeing a lot more people return to the office as well as shopping centres. Is this a reflection of better economic times ahead? Well, I think, um, I think looking back at the numbers, um, and I don't know this is difficult for many, many people who endured hardships through 2020, but the Australian economy only contracted 1.1%. Um, in the middle of 2020, in the depths of the lockdowns, um, there was a more significant contraction, but we saw states such as WA, New South Wales and Queensland bounce back quite strongly and you saw two quarters of 3% GDP growth um, for the September and December quarters. So that ended up with the economy being in relatively good shape from a GDP perspective. Um, I think that momentum has continued well into the first quarter of 2021, notwithstanding again the fact we had uh, some snap lockdowns in uh, Sydney and the Northern Beaches, uh, Brisbane and, and obviously Victoria also in early February. Um, I think what you're seeing is, is actually strong economic growth returning. Um, there'll be many sectors that won't return to where they, where they were previously and I think these are well understood. Any, any of the businesses relying on international tourists or inbound students in the education sector, I, I think they have a very difficult 2021. But you've got a lot of pent up demand from consumers. Um, I think the statistics here are very similar in the US. I think the US, it's estimated there's 1.9 trillion in cash in household savings uh, that's really looking for an opportunity to, to spend, uh, spend the money on. So I think the outlook for the second half of this year does actually look quite, quite robust. And, I think there was the mention of the Japanese exports, um, the Australian exports in the mining sector is very, very strong. Uh, employment growth is, is very strong in the resources sector as well. So um, I, I think uh, apart from a couple of those more heavily affected sectors, I think the outlook looks quite good. And even just on Queensland, and there hasn't been a lot of discussion about this to date, but uh, you know, if Brisbane is successful in winning the 2032 Olympics, a lot of the spending in that state uh, that's planned uh, will, will commence fairly quickly. And again, I think the economic outlook for the Sunshine State uh, likewise looks, looks very strong. What are the usual causes of financial difficulty for businesses? Well, it's, it's a very good question. And uh, interestingly, even in buoyant economic times, businesses uh, are still getting to financial difficulty and uh, in the worst case, you know, close up or have some sort of insolvency event. Um, it, look at medium-sized businesses, it, it is actually reasonably simple. Um, it'll be insufficient revenue to cover their costs of operating and opening the business, or it might be sufficient revenue 
um, but poor financial management. Um, you know, perhaps it might be expanding too quickly, not really understanding the, the true costs and profitability of the business. Um, it really does come down to you know, just, just revenue issues and financial management. Um, you know, often you have um, you know, particular events such as divorce or uh, you know, ill health of uh, a business owner or founder, but um, most common cause is insufficient revenue and or poor financial management. And uh, you know, man poor management of cash flow often is a byproduct of, of having insufficient revenue to, uh, to keep the business open. What, uh, what tends to mask it quite often is you know, business owners and founders, um, you know, their business is, is their life's passion quite often, and they will continue to put money into the business even if it is loss making. Uh, quite often they'll have a bank who's willing to continue to support the business, or they may be borrowing against their uh, residential home or using up other cash resources to put into the business. So you do see many businesses operate a loss for an extended period of time uh, until effectively the business owners run out of money. Yeah, so what can business owners do to ensure that they stay on top top of their cash flow as well as their liquidity risks? Obviously, you mentioned, I guess, getting that other opinion, but what are some of your other top tips for businesses? Oh, look, I think it's, it's, it's paramount on business owners and managers to understand their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, if finance is not one of their strong spots, I would strongly encourage them to you know, if you're big enough, employ, uh, employ a good finance manager or chief financial officer. If the business is not big enough, um, you know, go and look for an accountant who can not just do the bookkeeping, but also provide you with financial advice and guidance, who can keep an eye out on, uh, you know, warning signs or red flags where perhaps you may not have debtors who are paying on time, or perhaps the profitability has dipped due to some sort of drop in demand for the product. Um, even inflation, this is another another point which is not talked about a lot at the moment. I think we're going to see inflation pick up over the balance of 2021 and uh, that will see costs for many businesses increase um, and that will squeeze profitability. Um, so yeah, look, look for some external and internal advice. Um, stay on top of your debtors, you know, certainly make sure you're collecting from your debtors. And then there's a lot of financial tools available um, to, to help businesses forecast and manage their cash flow. 